Right. So let's pray in line with what um, scriptures that we read out. Let's pray. Right. Father, we thank you. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for these words, God, that you establish our thoughts, Lord, when we commit um, our ways to you and commit our work to you, God. And um, yes, Master, we thank you that you will establish our thoughts for the good, Lord, so that um, the words that we speak, God, will be the ideas we communicate, the, what we share will be, um, Lord, will be something that really is impactful, brings fruit, God, in people's lives, and is um, uh, helpful, beneficial for their lives, Master. Um, and also, <clears throat> Lord, we we thank you that uh, you direct our steps, Lord. You you direct our way, our choices, our decisions. Um, you direct us. God, we thank you, and and even to that end, Lord, we we yield, we commit ourselves, Lord, so that you can you know, you can direct us, God. We thank you for this promise. Thank you for this privilege that all of us can enjoy your directing. Um, and uh, yes, Lord, we choose to be sensitive to your direction. We choose to be sensitive and obedient, Lord, to your direction. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, so <clears throat> this um, the Lord directing us and uh, we being sensitive to that, uh, and also us, um, you know, committing this work to Him is uh, especially when it comes to you know the last topic that we um, discussed last class um, in leading people to respond to God's word. Right, so that's something that we looked at. So when it comes to leading people to respond to God's word. Um, yeah, uh, it it helps. We might have this thing. Okay, maybe I can do these things. Uh, you know, one two things creatively. But the Lord actually um, would either give His approval on it. You know, breathe life into that, or it could be um, where the Lord <clears throat> directs, gives some fresh ideas, gives some inspiration, and say, okay, why don't you do this? And that would be always turn out for the best, right? Um, and uh, emotionally, we might not feel like it. Um, but when we step in, when we just show up, when we step in uh, and start to do that, uh, what the Lord is leading, then you know you begin to see the hand of God, and that you know that further strengthens us, that refreshes us in the spirit, right? Okay, okay. So today, let's look at uh, in continuing with uh, chapter twelve, leading people to respond. Uh, we're going to look at a few things about application. Right, so uh, you, you remember we looked at making things relevant so that people can actually apply the word and right? apply the truth of what was shared. Right? They can, um, people can apply it. If I can apply it, meaning if I can live it out, do it, then it's going to stay with me, right? Uh, but if it's something very abstract and if it's uh, if it's not something that I can actually readily apply it, then it might stay for some time. But then, you know, I, I begin to lose. Uh, whatever was shared so um it's good that i apply it so so the thing is here are some guidelines for applic you know when it comes to application okay let's excuse me sorry okay so here are some guidelines okay now the application should not change the interpretation Excuse me. Just give me a minute. Sorry. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Okay, so the application should not change the interpretation. Okay, it's very important. So what do we mean by that? In the sense that um, the way you apply the word should not change the meaning of the truth that you shared. Okay, for example, if you look at some of these scriptures, you know, um, well, uh, let's, look at, let's say Romans 14. Um, let's look at Romans 14. And... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, Romans 14 uh, talks about um, 
um, you know, about receiving a person who's weak in faith and not allowing our liberty to hinder that person in any way, right? So uh, we, we, the whole chapter talks about that. It talks about, um, um, you know, when we, uh, it talks about, okay, somebody's observing a day, time, etc., cetera. And, um, you know, and, and one, one person esteems one day higher than their, better than their other. And let each one be fully considered convinced right um <clears throat> and and this um, goes on the second part of it, it goes on to talk about the food um the first part also you know one believes that one may eat all things and another one does not believe that way so it goes on to talk about uh, how uh, you know this is what this is how it ends right the chapter verse 21 onwards it's good it's neither to eat meat or drink uh, wine or do anything in which you're weak. A brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for example, uh, if you look at 1 Corinthians 8, let's uh, quickly go there. Um, Okay, so 1 Corinthians 8 is, <clears throat> again, very clear uh, about food offered to idols and uh, about the eating of it. And um, so if uh, uh, it's basically the same message, right? If this liberty of ours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak, okay? So <clears throat> now this is for a weaker brother. Okay, it's, it's very, very clear. In both these cases, it's about uh, someone who is not mature enough in faith. It's about someone who is, uh, there you have a scenario where there's, there's somebody who's a strong Christian, someone who's not a, so strong as a believer, maybe a new believer. <clears throat> One has maturity to know that, okay, um, food does not you know, take one person away from God. So it's fine. Idol is not anything uh, in the world, you know, who the true God is and so on. So um, so that person believes that, okay, it's fine. I can I can do this. I can eat this. But the other person uh, is, is actually hindered in their walk. Now that is for a believer. Okay, so the context is for a believer. It's not for an unbeliever, a person who is not a believer. You know, that's the thing. So if you're using it, uh, in the context for making a non-Christian or a, somebody who's not a believer, then we are missing the whole point. Right? So somebody's not a believer, somebody's not having a walking with the Lord, and you're using that these principles, and uh, you're saying, okay, um, therefore you cannot do these 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 things. Then it doesn't really uh, it, it is not applicable at all. Okay. So the thing is this. Uh, we have changed the interpretation of it. We've changed the context in which both these passages are, are, are communicated. Right? So <clears throat> it is not relevant. It, well, it's not for an unbeliever. It's for someone who is in the Lord. So we, uh, that's a small example of um, how we can't use it uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in preaching a message. Okay? Then the second one is, and there are a couple of other examples you can just go through it. The second one is if an application is given as an evidence, okay, uh, which is different from or broader than the application. Okay, now we are here, here we have this application. Now it has a broader scope. Um, then, uh, then we there are some ways by which we can justify it. Okay, so we have this particular truth which is shared in scripture and this is how it needs to be applied but it can be applied in a broader sense also so what things can i keep in mind okay let's look at uh, two things one <clears throat> basic thing is just you know does it appeal to common sense okay does it appeal to common sense does it appeal to common wisdom that this application can it be expanded to a broader scope to a wider range uh, or or so when we're saying you know uh, can it be applied in other scenarios also which is not really described here okay 
For example, um, you know, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19. Okay. 1 Corinthians 6, 1 Corinthians 3, they're talking about uh, how our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay. 1 Corinthians 6 specifically says, um, that, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Okay. So, can I use that scripture to talk about, let's say, not smoking? Okay. It, so, because the the if you see the context, it's about um, the, the Spirit of God dwelling in me, and therefore I should not um, in any way defile the body, okay, defile the temple, because I've been bought at a price, etc. And it's actually talking about, uh, you know, sexual immorality and all, if you read the previous verses, right? So, but, but so can I can I use that uh, in the context of anything else that defiles the body? Well, the answer is yes. Yeah, you can, you know. Um, but it, it, is, uh, it is something that is destroying the physical body, so you can use it of course okay so uh, you can you can uh, the the so the scope of, uh, of the application is widened you can use that but it's it's that is but we should also know that that is not the context in which that truth is mentioned here that your body is the temple of the holy spirit right the fact is that we are doing something that is definitely going to be harmful to the physical body and uh, and we can use it in that sense okay you can apply it in that sense okay uh, so similar uh, examples are here there are several scripture scriptures mentioned here um and uh, you see that some would be okay does it appeal to you know common wisdom yes it does or there could be a language indicating that you can apply for other versus other scenarios also you know if it if they're indicative of that then we can apply it okay so so that's the second one if if the application uh, has a scope for a wider uh, or a scenario or different uh, circumstances different uh, you know in uh, uh, different scenarios um i should check and see and and use it okay because um if i if we don't do that then it will be forced application, which means it's it is actually error. We are bringing people unnecessarily uh, under bondage, right? Because uh, it is we are not saying what scripture actually meant in that place, and we are applying it there. So anything that is forced, twisted, uh, you know, will will not really bring life. So that's the thing. Okay. The third thing is that um, um, a narrative example. Okay, uh, cannot be imposed authoritatively. Okay. Let's look at a few examples here. Okay, um, or, uh, when you look at Acts chapter fourteen and verse twenty-three. Okay, Acts fourteen twenty-three. <clears throat> so it says there. So when they had um, it, it, Acts fourteen talks about how they went in their second missionary journey and then they you know they did all these things uh, they went to all these places preached the gospel and then 23 says so when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting they commended them to the lord in in whom they had believed okay so um so the thing is that okay in the church there are many leaders it's not just one person who's a leader but there are plurality okay not just a singular leader there are many leaders in a church and that is you know that is very clear here okay um and also other places in scripture we see that apostles elders coming together considering you know so there is yes um so you see that principle there that uh, paul also talking about how he considered james peter and others to be pillars of the church right? so you know that um, let's look at one more uh, verse which does not seem to fit okay acts chapter one if you just back up to acts chapter one and verse four uh, and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father 
okay, this is the Lord's instruction to uh, the disciples, you know, the apostles saying, you wait for the promise of the Father. Promise of the Father meaning the outpouring, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is saying, you wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Okay, you go down to verse 13 and they went up, they were praying, um, they were in the upper room uh, and they were praying and I list down all these people. Verse 14 says, they all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and maybe the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. So so did, they did that. So because the Lord had actually given them a commandment not to move out of Jerusalem, but to wait there. So now to extrapolate that or to use that um, to apply in another scenario where if we say that in order for you or for one person to be filled with the Holy Spirit, one has to tarry or one has, that's the old English term for wait. Right? We need to wait. We need to wait for n number of days. We need to wait in prayer. You need, just like you know, the Lord commanded, wait so that you may be filled with the uh, uh, the, the, the spirit uh, for the promise of the father right so we see that so if we take that narrative okay, this is what happened so that's a that's a story that's an incident right that's the um, uh, account so i take that narrative and say okay this is how it happened therefore i also therefore you also you need to tarry in order to be filled in order to be baptized okay that would be forcing the application why because this is one narrative this is one account and we read the other accounts when we read uh, accept uh, of course accept two is a part of that when we read accept uh, um, maybe nine um, and then we read uh, accept a 10 and, um, and 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 so on you know all the other uh, incidents of people being filled people being baptized you realize that well they did not it was not so, right? In fact, accepted 10, Cornelius' house, as Peter was preaching, they were receiving, responding, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit right then and there. So, so this whole thing, actually, um, this tanning actually happened in church history, right? Um, we know that, that there was actually a teaching going around, one has to tarry, one has to, you know, sit, wait, um, you know, even wrestle, uh, you know, with the Lord, and and then on, only then uh, will you would you be filled with the Holy Spirit? Would you be baptized with the Holy Spirit? So it was birthed from that this application of this particular narrative. You know, this was birthed birthed from that place, right? So um, so we don't see that. We don't see that the rest of the places where people are just feel so so the narrative example you cannot say okay this is how it happens so therefore you know you need to do this unless there is a principle okay so you look at other things you can't you you see that there is no other principle the principle is that you're a believer and you come to the lord in faith and you be baptized in the holy spirit right or you be prayed for and you be filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's the principle. It's a principle of faith and not just tarrying. Okay. So um, these are just three examples or three guidelines for us when we make our application because we could be uh, at, at the you know at the risk of being making things relevant. Uh, we should not fit in. You know, try to you know like force the truth into that scenario okay many times um you know, people do that uh, and uh, and uh, the interpretation changes because they have not been really rightly dividing the word okay okay any any questions here before we get into the some of the practical aspects um, no questions uh, jeffina <laughs> no question at all. Okay. Yeah, Paul. Uh, Pastor, let's say uh, uh, regarding interpreting scripture and while sharing with people, um, is it uh, can this be applicable culture wise uh, in the sense like there is a culture where um, you know people uh, are okay to take wine? Okay, let's mm. say. 
so how do we uh, present the truth or can we uh, i don't i don't know if the compromise is the right word but <laughs> can we, uh, talk about yeah. that. what do you think about yeah so so you know something uh, culturally you know something like clothing some and also of course it doesn't come under the same category uh, drinking wine but we know that we can actually present um, a view where you know uh, w- w- like there's there's a lot of scripture uh, about wine and about the demerits of it rather that wine is a brawler probs talks about that um and uh, you know imp- impairs judgment and all that uh, talks about that so uh i guess we can just present uh, that and you know it also depends on you know i'm just talking from experience it just depends on uh, as a ministry and as a church you know what is it that you are um that you are uh, what is your value okay now it's uh, we know the demerits of it we know the dangers of it we know the doors that open to it but culturally it seems to be pre- pre- prevalent um so one of the two things right you you co counter culture and you you know they say this is this is the truth and we as a church we uh, you know we preach that we share that right um now if you let's say you're part of a church and um, the leadership team and everybody indulges in drinking and uh, you know then it's going to be tough uh, we can we can just present and say okay this is this is what scripture says um and this is, these are some of the dangers these are some of the physical dangers you know to your body these are some of the spiritual dangers and uh, yeah so that's the most we can do but but if you are a leader and god is interested to you uh, you know as a leadership then um, then you can go ahead and uh, you know present the truth in this way so now <clears throat> your question is okay you know, have have we been truthful in applying the truth you know, ha- in or have we kind of uh, compromised right so uh, so um so in the sense you you have presented your views it depends on you know who you are in that environment right so if you are a leader then uh, then the leadership team thinks like this then i think it's uh, you know you you should not compromise you know we should not compromise we should just say okay this is the truth this is what the truth is i know culturally this is what it is but i'm i won't be part of that you know uh, to, for us to take that stand uh however if we are in a place of um uh let's say you know leader if you if you are in a place of leadership or influential leadership and uh, then i guess uh, we can take that stand where we say okay this is what we believe as a church and uh, this is how we are going to live this out as a church and stay true to that um yeah so, pastor just to yeah. add to that so let's say you are someone from your church is having a function let's say house warming or a uh, birthday party or something and they are serving <clears throat> uh, <throat> wine okay so it's a social even yeah. it's not like alcohol but uh, you know it's they say it's a homemade <laughs> 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 okay. okay so uh, no, we we can always abstain from it but uh, i'm just thinking like should we teach uh, that we are not following and if they are also part of your volunteer team uh, members um, volunteer team leader mm. uh, how do we because uh, i'm just talking about mangalore and they, they are very uh, honestly speaking they, they are very socially you know uh, involved and they mm. have wine everywhere mm. <laughs> as far as we have seen right uh, right right yeah yeah so the thing is uh, you know uh, with regard to volunteering i i think it's uh, it's pretty clear uh what the expectations are you know if you are volunteering in church it's uh, it is very clearly mentioned no alcohol no wine no you know uh, no drugs no smoking whatever so so it's very clear you know you are representing the church the ministry which has this stand so so it's very clear so it's easy to you know communicate to someone who's a volunteer in church saying hey, this is the this is the stand this is of, of the ministry uh so uh, you're representing you're being part of it so that's clear uh, but otherwise i think um, uh, yeah people see you and you're toasting with a glass of water instead of wine uh and those are teachable moments when people ask you that question you know why why not 
uh, why don't you do this and say you know this is this is what I believe in this is a and therefore I'm being true to this truth uh, so that will be a teachable moment uh, and uh, yeah so we're not condemning anybody yeah yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. So what? What? What if I'm just going one more step further? Yeah. yeah <laughs> but what yeah. if they ask? You know, Apostle Paul also mentioned Timothy that you can have wine. Mm. Uh, in... <laughs> so, so yeah. So whenever you have a stomach ailment, so the question <laughs> yeah. to ask is, do you have a stomach ailment? <laughs> and uh, yeah, wine will take care of it. But we also have other things like Norflox and uh, you know other drugs to take care of it. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, so that's the thing, you know. It's um, I know it's 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 not a uh, uh, when it comes to culture and when it when it's so intermingled with uh, tradition, when it's so intermingled with uh, you know uh, the popular things of the uh, of the of the day, um, then it's uh, difficult to kind of extricate. Okay, what is culture? What is truth? Um, but I think it's important that we do that, and it um, and be patient with it. You know, be patient with people also as they and slowly they will, yeah, they'll come to see the truth of it. Yeah. So it's not a very yeah, it's not a, a very watertight uh, situation. <laughs> you know, but for us we can you know we can uh, and in fact I think there's a whole uh, there's a sermon on uh, on this very topic. Um, yeah. So oh, we can share that, yeah. Um, yeah, so Sir came uh, saying uh, in Delhi, people think if you are a Christian, they never be drinking wine. Yeah, correct. That's true. So uh, yeah, same thing, you know, in when I was working organizations, people said, hey, you must be at least drinking wine. Uh, so they, they associate cakes and wines with you know you being a Christian. Um, so yeah, so that's popular uh, or traditional view. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so we so we yeah so we were talking about application of truth, and I think that's that <laughs> with that we went into these discussions. But uh, but it's good. Yeah, it's good that we we understand these things and we take a stand on these things, right? Okay. Uh, any other uh, questions? <clears throat> and um, yeah, and uh, I was just thinking, you know, there are some cultural practices which do not necessarily, you know, contradict the truth or uh, in any way, uh, you know, put down the truth anyway. You know, it's cultural things like uh, uh, maybe. Uh, people greeting one another, cultural things like maybe regarding your footwear, uh, regarding uh, you know your attire. Uh, I think these are things. These are you know these are not the core, but these are in the periphery, and uh, and it's fine, right? It's not in any way. Um, uh, it's not. In, I'm just reading John's comment. Yes, <laughs> time to have a meeting, volunteer team meeting. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, Pastor, one more uh, question. So yes, we spoke about uh, um, uh, smoking and uh, if that. Uh, any other scripture, Pastor, like we, which we can point out? Uh, when it comes to... For the body. Yeah? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, the body actually talks about gluttony also, you know, being sin, right? So, which is uh, affecting the body, uh, you know, weight-related issues, weight-related complications. So, God really want, wants us to be functioning well. Uh, body is a gift from God. Um, and He wants us to be functioning well to, to actually run the race well, right? So, um, so that's... Um, that's something that gluttony is sin that we can use. Um, but uh, particularly about smoking, I, I think this verse, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, actually refers to that. Um, anything else? Um, not that I can think of, um, John. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, let's move on to uh, chapter thirteen, and uh, we're going to look at some practical instructions. 
okay some practical instructions when it comes to ministering god's word and we'll go through this before we go into um, uh, to just focus on the presentation of it confident speaking and uh, like i mentioned earlier we're going to look at some uh, draw some you know insights from uh, ted talks that is technology education and uh, i always uh, design ted ted talks um, and also you know these are talks these are just 18 minutes not uh, christian uh, secular uh, various topics but uh, we can learn a lot from presentation right uh, from that so we're going to look into that okay so let's uh, let's look at um, chapter 13 and uh, you know, first thing that we see is that uh, again, this is again a reiteration, uh, Jeremiah chapter one and verse twelve. That now God confirms His word; God is watching over His word to confirm it. Okay, so several things here that we can learn. Okay, one, let my content, the content of my message, content of my message, uh, be the word, be the truth of God's word that I'm communicating. Okay, so because He watches over the word too perform it to confirm it right so let it be the truth of god's word let me speak as the oracles of god let me communicate that truth okay um so that is one S the second thing is that when when we when we know that this is the promise of god's word uh, not only in jeremiah but also in hebrews chapter 2 and and also in the book of acts we see that god confirms or gives evidence to the preaching of the truth with his presence and power. Okay, so that gives us great reassurance, right? Uh, and that the fact that we are partnering with him in this, right? Uh, we, uh, we are privileged to partner with him in this, right? And that, um, uh, and that fills us with joy. That gives us great reassurance that God is actually doing this. God is confirming it. God is bringing evidence to uh, whatever I'm doing, he is confirming it, but he'll do it when, sorry, uh, when I make sure that I'm speaking as the oracles of God, I make sure that I'm speaking, um, not from my own resources, but whatever God has put in my heart, right? And I'm depending on him, uh, and he will establish things, right? So, um, so that's the thing. Uh, uh, the second point is that, that we deliver the word but God will confirm the word. Okay. Now, when it comes to confirmation of God's word, we may not always see immediate results. Okay. But having said that, I just want to say that we will see immediate results as well. Okay. So there are things that happen immediately because God's word function, functions in that way. There is that immediate that happens. There is that spontaneous thing that happens. Okay, how do we know that? Because we know that God's word is alive, powerful. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about that. Um, Jeremiah 23 talks about how the word of God is like fire that burns. Now, fire is immediate. It's something that you, you know that you know there's a, there's a fire. Right? Visibly, you know, there's, there's some change that's happening. So um, it is immediate as well. At the same time, do not underestimate the, the long term, right? Do not underestimate the long term because Mark chapter 4 talks about, well, the word of God is like the sower went to the field to sow and the seed is the word of God. So the, we know that the seed takes time, right? But there is something that's happening. The seed has intrinsic power and life. And when it is sown and it's, it's in, in the, that environment, it is going to bear fruit, right? So, so do not, uh, you know, do not get discouraged when you don't see the immediate, but also expect the immediate, because we know that this is the nature of God's word. Okay, so two things, right? So, uh, we can expect the immediate, and also never uh, underestimate. The, the time frame or the process that it takes because it is working. Um, the word will work in a person's life, right? Um, but it needs to be mixed with faith and a whole lot of other things as well, right? So, okay. Uh, the other thing, uh, when we are called to minister the word, minister the word to edify, okay? Now you might ask, okay, what if it's a, you know, a birthday celebration? What if it's, a, you know, some, some get together, you know, 
it, it's strange things happen, right? Somebody says, okay, birthday celebration, pastor, you share the word. <laughs> and, it's, uh, and it's the birthday, birthday of a one-year-old, you know? So, uh, so what, do you, what do you do? Well, share the word, share something. You don't have to go into a long message. Oh, I remember going to a birthday party uh, of this similarly, you know, one-year-old, a two-year-old, and then the person who prayed for the, you know, prayed for the dinner for the food rather so that person actually went on to preach a message starting from genesis went on to the cross went on to, oh it was uh, it was misery <laughs> you know because everything was done and this person went on to just preach the whole thing and uh, and then pray so you know the other you know other side of it but the fact is you know, we can always uh, we, we can always uh, you know Minister the word uh, in even in a similar setting, right? Uh, and um, I know in, in, quite recently a couple of birthday celebrations, and um, the Lord gave the word to minister to for the parents. It was not for the children, but for the parents, and uh, and it was good to share that, right? Something simple. Um, yeah, it was good to share that. So uh, preach to uh, edify and never to entertain. Okay. Um, the fact is that if you're an engaging speaker and uh, if you're, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe you're skilled with words and all that, then um, there is a temptation, okay, you know, you want the approval of people. Maybe you want people to say it is great and you want people to really, you know, um, uh, enjoy it. Of course, all that is valid, but, uh, you know, just maybe the temptation is to make people lie like you or laugh and be engaging and all that so uh, just think about the motivation right what is it that's motivating me to be right there to minister the word right? and uh, think about the uh, the fact that it's a privilege you've been invited you've given you know you, you have an invitation so you have an opportunity and it's not just to you know the it is to edify right and entertainment in the sense well, people will anyway enjoy as they are being edified. Uh, they will be comforted. They will be encouraged. They will be inspired. They will be motivated, and uh, of course, they'll you know go home with a very wholesome uh, experience. Right, and all that stems from edification, being edified. But if it's only entertainment with the motive of being entertained, then all the other things may not happen. Uh, it'll just fall by the way. They may not be inspired. They may not be motivated. They may not be, you know, edified. It'll just be entertained. Oh wow, it was a great message. What was it? I don't know. It was great. It was funny, um, right? So uh, be careful. Uh, think about it. Okay. Um, also, um, the fifth one is to to deliver the unadulterated word of God in all sincerity. Okay, let's look at a few scriptures here. Second Corinthians two and so seventeen. Um, verse seventeen. Um, Paul says, "You know, we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God and Christ." Now, uh, at the writing of this time, uh, Paul, uh, there were a lot of people who were actually ministering uh, in the name of ministry. They were. They were traveling to churches, and um, so Paul, you know, Paul is actually distinguishing between the true apostles and the false, and and in doing so, he's saying, you know, they are peddling the word of God, and the word used there is uh, uh, is to adulterate. You know, how you could take a liter of milk and then you add two more liters of water to it, and it becomes diluted, and right? it's adulterated. So that's the picture we have here. So he's saying, you know, do not adulterate the word of God in order to set it, in order to make it palatable or in order for acceptance. Don't adulterate the word of God. Um, and But, you know, sincerely minister as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. So that's the, so um, that's the instruction we have. So, you know, let's not adulterate the word of God. And Second Corinthians 4, um, <clears throat> was one and two um, says we have um, therefore 
since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So here again, when it comes to the ministry, when it's handling the word of God, is very specifically saying, we have renounced the hidden things of shame, and we are not walking in craftiness, okay, uh, in uh, wanting to deceive people or manipulate people, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like trying to use it as a, as a means to get something, using the word of God in order to control your behavior for my, you know, for my benefit, um, and so on. You know, so very careful, especially the area of giving in, in the in the area of um, if we're giving financially. You know, um, so when it comes to ministering the word, when it comes to teaching about giving, or maybe for particular cause, you know, raising, fundraising, and all that, you know, be careful. Uh, do not intimidate people with the word. Do not, sometimes we've heard, you know, if you do not give, then God will not bless, and, and you are you are losing out on something, and you have to do this in order to, in order for God to bless, and so on. So pe putting people, fear in people's heart, right? Uh, and using the word uh, so that you get something, you know, so Paul is saying we don't do anything, not in craftiness, not deceitfully, by by manifestation of the truth, because the truth always liberates. Right? Truth does not bring people into bondage; it liberates. It has, it has this capacity to liberate, and the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. So he's saying by manifestation of the truth, by display of the truth. Okay, that is how we minister. So um, we minister the word, word in that way. Okay, um, we also rightly divide the word of truth, Second uh, Timothy chapter two. Well, we won't go into that scripture, but Paul, you know, reiterates that you need to rightly divide because um, the reason is this: if uh, believing leads to conviction, leads to action, leads to destiny, right? So you. So if you divide the word rightly and you minister the word, people are going to believe it, be convinced of it because by the power of the Holy Spirit. Their actions are going to change, their thoughts are going to change, there will be transformation in their life, their lifestyle is going to change, and their destiny is going to change because of that. So a whole lot is actually linked to rightly dividing the word of God. Okay, so... Um, Inter interpretation to be consistent with the rest of scripture, of course, um, and avoiding arguments over words. Um, 2 Timothy 2 verse 14, um, avoiding arguments over words, um, but to actually share something which is edifying because uh, because of those arguments, there is strife uh, and um, saying not to strive over words um, to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers, right? Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Okay, so arguments on words, arguments on, you know, uh, maybe other things also, but let there be no striving which, because of which the hearer is not edified. Okay, so, so do not do that. Okay. Um, uh, several things here. Minister present truth. You know, this is this is a big one. Second Peter two verses one two. So, uh, minister the present truth. So, what do we mean by that when we say present truth? Okay. So, um, understand that we are in in which dispensation we, we are in, and what are the things that have been given to us freely by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Understand, walk in it, right? So this is what Peter says, right? Uh, Peter, when he, Second uh, Peter chapter 1, he, he talks about adding to your faith, you know, and he gives several things that you need to add to your faith, meaning this needs to be part of your life. And then uh, he says, if you do these things, you will never stumble. Verse 12, for this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you 
always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Okay, so so the thing is this: yes, understand what dispensation you are in. Understand that you are living on this side of the cross. Understand um, the aspect of uh, the change in identity because of that. Understand the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, understand your inheritance, all that you have in Christ. Uh, understand that, and uh, and and the move uh, that we are in right right now. You know, the th things restorative moves of God. God has brought back several things back to the body, back to the church, um, and uh, the fact that there's a restoration of the apostolic, the prophetic. Um, the teaching ministry and all that God has brought about that restoration and uh, the present truth is, is that that yeah the uh, uh, the the saints doing the work of ministry so saints are not spectators right believers are not spectators so if you're a leader in a church and you're shepherding a group of people then it's not for people to just be a spectator it is not for people to come and attend and be passive about it but for them to discover the call discover the gifts experience walk in it and to go and do the work of ministry right now that's the that's the truth that's the present truth the fact that every believer is a minister the fact that every believer can and can manifest the gifts of the spirit the fact that every believer can hear the voice of god um, you know and prophesy and receive from the holy spirit and and all these things so this is the present truth right so minister the present truth right? just, just don't go and hold on to something which is in the old dispensation and forget the times that we are in okay okay so we have uh, four more things um but um yeah we'll pick it up next class okay thank you and uh, god bless